Hello, Virgo. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully your day is getting off to a great start. Thanks for giving me a couple minutes here. I wanted to get your poll set up and uh, get prepared for today's reading. Uh, today it was kind of cool. We had a, a spider come into, um, well, I had a spider come into my dreams. I also ran across a couple when I was taking the walk with Apollo. And uh, the thing that I wanted to focus on for you is the, um, the ability for you to basically utilize your power, uh, be strategic, and focus on timing. Because the spider that I saw was a wolf spider in my dreams, but I ran across just the standard brown spider here that you would see day to day. But um, suffice it to say, with all those sort of spiders that I kept seeing this morning, I feel like there's a great opportunity for um, fast action and quick results to happen um, if you strategize appropriately. So I think today's going to be a special reading. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. We're going to be taking a look at Virgo, and we're going to look at Sun, Rising, Moon, and Venus. Give me just one second here as I reach over across to the side here. I always like to have a monitor to make sure that I see what you're seeing. And um, as you can see here with the format, we're going to be uh, covering some dream messages first. That's the channel messages. Then we'll be taking a look at uh, the Celtic cross and all of the other sort of energies and elements that we look at as well. So let me just pull this up real quick and then we'll get started. Uh, a couple of quick notes. Thank you for being patient as I've had to adjust the time this week. Um, again, there's some construction going on. I'm so happy to report that I found a new apartment. I'll be moving on the first. And so all of my readings next month will be at normal time. So, um, also, I'll be able to more accurately put out my monthly schedule. This month, I've had to kind of just piecemeal it out uh, week by week, and that's been a little frustrating and probably difficult for you to follow. So thank you so much for your patience on that. Change requires flexibility, and um, moving, as you know, is one of the more challenging things that you can go through. So I'm doing my best to kind of balance out the work schedule as well as moving. So thank you so much for your patience. It means a lot. All right couple of quick notes and we'll get straight into everything. If you'd like to participate in the live chat, just a reminder to please subscribe. It also helps the channel. And if you like what you see, share it with some other folks because I'd love to get to our next milestone. When we get to, um, let's see, I think it's 325,000. Yeah, when, we're about 2,000 away. The minute I hit that, I will put out a Q&A video that week. So let's make it happen sooner than later and we can have some fun with the Q&A. Uh, follow me on social media for reminders and also I'm trying to experiment a little bit with shorts. I put one up here on YouTube as well if you like it, comment. If you'd like to see, I might try some different things with the shorts so it's not always just the energy of the day. I might just do like a single question or something about change or something about love. So I'll play around with the shorter form content as well just to give you something to look at if you're in a hurry because I do listen to feedback and I know some people need a quick read. So I'll try to mix it up a little bit. Anyway, I put that on social media and you can see that on Instagram and TikTok, for instance, if you want some of my shorter form content. Reminder that um, it's always my name on social media and that I don't offer any private readings or use DMs. So be smart and report anybody that looks suspicious. If you'd like to show love and support, you can do that here live uh, using the this little icon here, uh, basically for Super Chat and Super Stickers. And there's also a thanks option on replay and uh, it allows you to post a, a little remark with that. So thank you so much to anybody that does it. I appreciate your time, your support, your help. All right, we're gonna move on to the channel messages as I get the presentation set up here. Like I said, we have some really cool imagery coming through for you today starting with uh, the wolf spider. <laughs> also including sort of a very technical thing that I was seeing in dreams where I was looking at a computer being rewired and um, avoiding a meltdown, which to me has a lot of different connotations and we'll break, break that down in just a few minutes here. Let's begin with uh, the first totem, which was the wolf spider. And I always like to do a little research on insects and animals and uh, anything that I'm getting in nature. This is a really cool one, not something that I love. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I saw one of these spiders jump out of a drain. <laughs> I used to live in the Rocky Mountain area as a child, and I was like, I don't need to see that again. Um, but they are kind of cool and sort of fuzzy and cute if you're just looking at a picture of them. Not necessarily something you want to see in your house, but they have very good eyesight. Uh, they live mostly in solitude. They don't spin webs. 
Um, they do, however, kind of like lie in wait and wait for the right moment to go after their prey. So they're very much, I get the sort of rationale behind why they were called a wolf spider because they hunt and they wait and it's about timing and strategy. Um, so basically that's why I titled this slide the way that I did and I specifically went to this particular card because it always sticks in my head. Actually, I think a lot of the, the king cards have chess pieces in the Lightseer deck. So to me, this uh, symbolizes strategy, patience, timing. Uh, and it reminds you, this totem, this lovely wolf spider, to look, listen, and research. Know what you're doing before you take that leap of faith. It's going to make you much more effective. Um, you can use the element of surprise or timing to your benefit, and, um, and good things will happen, okay? So <laughs> there you go. Um, a fuzzy little totem that, you know, maybe we don't love, but it's, it's actually a beautiful insect, just not in your house, right? <laughs> I'm with you on that. It's also solitary. So they live in a bunch of habitats, but typically on their own, like a lone wolf, right? Uh, but even though the, the moon card would seem like the go-to on this, I'm really focusing on the attributes of, of, the, of the, this particular toad. And we'll talk about the wolf piece in, a, in a, just a moment here. But uh, what I wanted to focus on in this particular slide is solitary, uh, energy of the hermit and also sort of the independent or carefree energy of the fool. Um, so some of you may just want some time to yourself. You, you might want some time to do this on your own. We could have also put the eight of cups here, needing to break away from the group or the six of swords. There's a lot of different cards that would work here. But the main message that I got with this was independence. And there are times where it makes a lot of sense, and we'll talk about this in a moment when it comes to maybe accountability or project management, to lean on someone. But when it comes to the development, when it comes to the brainstorming or the ideation, you, you might need some time away from that noise, from the pressure, from the deadlines to formulate whatever it is you're trying to do. So there may be a little bit of back and forth that you need, but take the time uh, to yourself and, and by yourself to basically find your footing, right? Now, once you've done that, once you know what you're trying to do, who you are, what the goal is, then you can work with someone, then you want to seize the moment, and just like that spider would pounce into action, perfect. But it's all about, like that chess piece, strategizing, taking some time, then moving. And um, I would say toward the end of the month, that's when you want to make sure that the action is happening. We're looking again at the next six to eight weeks, but I would say by the end of August, because this reading's for August, it's time to set things into motion. And if you need help at that point, that's where you can reach out, where you can hire someone, where you can make sure that uh, things aren't sort of languishing a little bit there. Okay. Trust yourself and work your magic and trust your magic, I should say, as well. Um, so the, the dream that I had about this computer that was having issues, the first piece uh, that I'm seeing here, it's just about taking a different approach and trusting that it's okay to not repeat what you did before. Uh, in corporate environments, in I would say publicly traded companies, or even when you kind of like do something well, people just want you to kind of do the same thing again and again and again. Unfortunately, that isn't a great way for you to grow. It isn't necessarily the best path for success and it isn't following the trends, it isn't innovative. And uh, relevant, let's think of artists, whether it's a, a painter, a musician, a writer. But I would say relevant artists are willing to take risks and change and move. And uh, particularly if you're listening to music, it's those catalogs that are more interesting because if it's just the same album rehashed every time, eventually sales will fall away, eventually interest fades, and it gets boring for both the artist and the listeners. But when a risk is taken, when something sounds different, when there's a new approach, but there's still the essence of who that person was, that's when magic happens. So know who you are. Don't try to change that, but don't be afraid to experiment, to try a little bit. And um, the rewiring and the rebooting that I was seeing with the computer, to me, um, was hearkening to that magician card, which is saying, we've got all these tools in front of us. You don't always have to put the ingredients the same way. It's not, it's not just, even cooking requires a little bit of experimentation. So try more of this, a little less of this. Try this first. Um, see what happens. Have some fun. Experiment. In the same vein, keep it true to who you are. Never push yourself uh, to doing something that's like inauthentic. Be authentic. 
And, and as long as you're doing that and as long as you're having fun, people will be supportive of whatever that journey is for you. Now, I saw that if you didn't do the rewiring or the reboot, that there was like a meltdown that happened. Um, and I think the important thing here to think about is um, a chance for many of us to avoid conflict and avoid having the sort of mental meltdown that happens when we are stressed out, when we are worried about things, uh, when we sometimes are lacking our better judgment. I put the judgment card here because it, it has a few different connotations. One is we don't need to cast judgment or worry too much about other people unless they're inviting us in, unless they're open to receive. So maybe keep judgment to yourself unless it's appropriate to, to share or it's been asked for you to share that. Um, don't judge yourself harshly. Realize that if there's any sort of mistake, any sort of loose end, anything that happens where it wasn't what you wanted, it's all about what you decide to do about that. So we don't always talk about that with the judgment card, but you, it, things are what you make of them. So I don't really think that there's, you know, failure is kind of like a subjective thing. There could be a setback, there could be a learning experience, there could be a delay, but that doesn't mean that the, that's a full on failure. So you have a chance to redirect, to learn, to improve the foundation and um, avoid conflict and avoid a meltdown. The meltdown could just be your own sort of meltdown. We've all been there where you think, oh my God, everything's crashing down and it's not really. It's a chance to find something better. And um, even when I was looking for, you know, opportunities for certain jobs or in the case of, you know, finding a, a place to live, sometimes things fall through and you get disappointed, but then what does open up, it's worth the wait. So love, relationships, finding um, the perfect fit for you, it's always worth the wait. Um, so don't judge yourself harshly. Instead, assume that you, the universe has your back and is moving you along. This is also a card of getting a second chance um, and also, you know, really kind of making the most of that second chance. So uh, this is just a new chapter, just a new page. Okay. Uh, when you're talking to someone, make sure that you give them time to speak. Make sure that you get the same courtesy in return. And if you're not, it's time to step away. Mediation may be necessary, uh, especially if the other person's made up their mind before they enter the room. And this is, we've all had this from time to time. So overall, I really like what we see here. Let's just review the cards and then let's get into the reading. Okay, so the um, most important thing with the wolf spider was timing, patience and strategy. Really knowing what's going to happen and uh, knowing when you want to do something in advance of doing that. Taking time to yourself and doing what you need to do on your own before maybe rejoining with someone that can help you stay on track. It's always good to have someone that's keeping you accountable, but you still need to do the work on your own first. Trust in your own capacity to innovate and don't try to repeat or capture lightning in a bottle twice. Um, it's more important for you to just focus on creating new magic and new stories and new narratives. And then when it comes to feeling that meltdown, be kind to yourself, think of it differently. I would say perspective is everything. Try to not walk into a situation with preconceived notions. And if someone else is coming in with that, it's time to have someone else maybe run the meeting or step aside or come back when that person is clearer minded. Uh, and these are the messages that came through for today. Okay, pretty succinct, pretty clear. Let's take a look and see which deck you'd like me to use. I put a poll up a little bit earlier. Looks like the sun and moon, which makes a lot of sense because we just came through a full moon. So uh, thanks everyone for voting. I thought I would try doing that ahead of time to, uh, to basically save us a little bit of time in the flow of the messages here. So let me grab the sun and moon deck and uh, zoom in on the camera here and let's get everything started. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're doing well. All right, let's begin, everyone. Uh, this is going to be for the next six to eight weeks. If you just joined, you can use it for your sun, your rising, your moon sign, also Venus or any aspect of your chart. And a little bit later here, I'm going to uh, basically walk through sun rising and moon specific messages. So stick around for that. Let's zoom in a little bit more. There we go.
good to see all of you checking in from so many different locations. That's one of the best things about being able to do uh, virtual readings like this. Um, I love seeing people from all the different parts of the globe. And I love that we're all taking a few, few moments to start off the next month and see what's coming through. So thanks for, thanks for joining. Like I said, just a heads up that I should be going back to my normal time next month. This is extremely early. I'm used to it by now, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll almost seem like a luxury to have like a 9 a.m. Pacific reading again. Uh, but <laughs> uh, baby steps. Let's just get through this month first and this reading first. All right. So got everything laid out on the table. Let me zoom back just a little bit so you can see it. And uh, let's begin the messages. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's begin with your channeled message today. Or not your channel message, but your catalyst card first. And the catalyst card is protection. Um, really cool illustration here. It says protection guardian, drop your shields. Um, we have peacock feathers here, which is really interesting. There's some divine masculine energy coming through. Um, the card is in reverse. And so for some of us, there could be an incident in the past or an experience in the past that makes it really difficult to be yourself, to let someone in. And I do think it's wise to pick and choose who, when, and how much you want to sort of like let, let these people in or let the, let the shields down. But at a certain point, you do have to open up uh, when you're speaking with someone or else it's difficult to know where you stand or where they stand. So an, an example is if you're, you know, if there's a business engagement or it's a first date or you're just trying to check in on someone, but you can feel that like all the walls are up. It's very difficult for you to know. Have you overstepped your boundaries? Is this person interested in continuing the conversation? Are they OK? Um, all it, it starts to lead the other person, if your shields are up too much, to kind of go down a questioning rabbit hole. So you can validate uh, as you're kind of having a conversation expectations, appreciation. You don't want to play it too cool. You don't want to put everything out there. It's kind of like that perfect dance and that perfect medium. S sort of like take that person's lead to, I would say, in the situation. But um, it is important to be, a, be open. As a medium, as a reader, that's one of the things that we have to kind of like dance around too. It's how, how to open up just enough to receive, but not so much that you're feeling like a sponge. Okay, so uh, you can practice with meditation. One of the things that I do when I light the candles is, for instance, I would, uh, with the first candle, we can even set this intention without having to light another one. You can just say, as we're doing this reading today or as, it, as you're going through the day, um, please be open to guidance in the highest forms um, from love, light, compassion, and the energy of God. And if you put that sort of expectation in your auric field, then stuff that is low frequency, um, that is not helpful, that is not of the highest good, it's going to bounce back or it's going to filter out or you're going to sense it and you're thinking, okay, I don't need that. So just set an expectation as you go through the day that you're going to receive um, things in the highest good and energy from the highest source and things that are going to help rather than hinder. And these sorts of things are going to help you have just enough protection and just enough of an openness or an opening to basically be intuitive and be aware of what's going on around you. Okay, so that's my guide with that. I would say drop it within reason and drop it with intention. And then you can keep up the rest and say, protect me from anything that is not of these highest frequencies or of the highest good for me. Okay, let's go back into the cards now and see what additional messages are coming through. I love that we got the star at the center here. The star is a fantastic card uh, to, to kick off the month because it's really showing the power, the importance, and the connection here with you being able to be your true self. Um, the card reverse sometimes comes through when we are in a people-pleasing moment, when we decide that it's more important to, uh, to sort of like make our parents happy, make our partner happy, make the teacher happy. Uh, and, you know, I was talking at the beginning when we were looking at channeled messages about the fact that you, you're the magician, you're a creator. Let's pull that slide up again for just a moment. Um, and as long as you're in that power of creation, you can't really go wrong because this is source energy that we're always connected to. So the star card at its core is basically saying you are the source. When you reverse this, you're either taking the dimmer switch and muting your light or you're doubting the source. 
the source being what your intuition is, what your inside is. So I would say don't doubt the source. We have a mermaid here, which kind of shows that combination of two different um, uh, two different elements being in the being on the earth and also being in the water. So you can ground yourself and do something practical, but you can also connect to your most creative impulses and find a way to bring that creativity or bring that sense of self into everyday life. Um, the spotlight might also be sh shined on you right now and you just have to sort of figure out what am I going to do with this and the best thing that you can do is trust that if it's shining it's shining for a reason and you step into the spotlight and do your best and uh, give it your all and for any of you that have done like public speaking or you're a performer or you do a lot of live stuff like I do you know that the minute things start you, you go into a different mode um, it's almost like you step outside of yourself. I'm sure that actors understand this too. Actors, musicians, or anybody that speaks a lot, you know what to do and there's just a piece of yourself that sits to the side and then you just allow stuff to kind of channel. The preparation work that you did before, which we talked about, will allow you to sort of sit there and be the channel. And the star is one of the best channeling cards that you can pull. The magician's great. High Priestess is even better. The star is fantastic. So we don't want to doubt the energy of the star. We don't want to be anything less than authentic. And I think as long as you are able and willing to be yourself and trust in the flow, then when the, shot, when the spotlight is shining on you, you're going to feel okay. You're going you're gonna to make it work. And it's not about perfection. It's something I feel like I have to say a lot of because we have such a high bar of excellence that we set for ourselves and sometimes even for others. Perfection's nice, uh, but... What's more important is that you engage with the people around you, um, that you are working your truth, working your passion. And when that happens, even if there's a stumble, even if there's a pause, even if it isn't perfect, people are going to remember the good stuff. Um, so it's about your recovery and it's about the overall, um, I would say, the message and the energy that they're receiving. And that's all you have to focus on. So don't worry about being perfect. Again, don't worry about lightning striking twice in the same place or having to repeat things exactly the way they were before. It's just about what's next. What's the next big idea? And that's why we have the world or in this particular deck, the universe card next. So this is a time to completely reset and try something different. And um, I forget which um, particular deity this is. If I think it might be Shiva. Um, but what we see here is a chance for you to kind of like and if, if I'm correct, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, I'm trying to remember the, there's a, a song that goes with it, Natsariah. Um, anyway, but there's a, in uh, Eastern religion, there's like this deity that will dance on the, the backs of <laughs> the demons to basically, uh, I think it is Shiva, um, but basically will destroy and kind of work through all that old energy. So what I would say right now is there's an opening and the, the doors that were once closed to you, um, are now starting to open because you have changed. You've shed the skin, and the world card always shows that opening at Shiva, thanks for their validation. So um, I believe that this particular illustration is a, a basically a representation of that. So Shiva's really interesting. I meditated once with, with that energy before bed, and I would not um, ever <laughs> say that you should do that. It should be a daytime meditation if you're going to work with Shiva. Because I had crazy dreams all night where I was working through old karma. Um, and literally, I was being shown things that I needed to release. And I had to work through those sort of messages and those energies. And I was being shown mirrors of all the stuff that I still needed to work on. Um, what's cool right now is I feel like many of you have overcome some sort of a setback. So Maybe you finally just sat down and did a kind of internal audit and thought, why does this keep happening? Maybe it's a relationship sort of thing where you meet the same template of a person and, it's, and you, you understand if you kind of take a moment, you're like, well, I was at this point in my life when that happened. I was feeling this when this happened and I could have done a little better here. You kind of put the pieces together and you see the pattern. And this is a, a breaking of that pattern. Um, it could also be a pattern with money. Uh, and your relationship to that, either what you're getting paid or how you're spending it or debt management, and you finally see the pattern and you decide, it's like an epiphany or a declaration, I'm done with that. So give yourself a moment to think what it is that you're finally finished with in your life and what you want to welcome in instead. And the universe card, much like the death card, is 
a doorway card. Um, the universe or the world card is the last in the major arcana, and it's basically going to reset you back to the fool. But I always like to remind folks, it's not like a beginning, at, you know, the very beginning, it's a wise fool. It's more like hermit energy um, in the shape of the fool, because you've gone through everything. Now you're wiser. Now you can go through the next journey, probably shortcutting and jumping to different parts of the major arcana. So yes, there's a new doorway opening. Yes, there's a little work to do, but it's going to be easier this time. It's going to be fun. New beginnings are also really invigorating. And again, I'm on a precipice of a move. There's a lot you have to do in order for that to happen. You have to disconnect things. You have to connect things. You have to pack things. You have to throw things away. You have to coordinate the effort. It's like a lot of work, actually. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it for the change. It's worth it, worth it because you're ready for that. Getting married is very similar. Graduating from university or college is the same way. Moving in or moving out, divorcing, all these things that we're, we're doing in our lives, typically by choice, because we have to move to the next juncture in the road, it requires work. But it's so much better to do the work than to stagnate. And so this month, um, smack dab in the center, we see a call to be the authentic you with the star. We see the world, which could be a very big shift. All of the ones that I just mentioned could apply. A change in employment, a change in location, a change in relationship status. And all of this is to help shift you into a more authentic state or version of yourself. So my advice to you would be to um, do it on your own so that the universe doesn't have to bring in something like the tower or some sort of third party. And we see the devil coming in here too. So I feel like you can avoid that energy and we'll talk about it in just a moment. All right, deep past, we have the 10 of cups. Um, you have 10 of cups and lovers. So some of you are entering into, maybe for the first time in a while, uh, a new relationship, or you're focusing on doing something that you love because this is energy of the heart and it's connected with the authentic you and it's letting others see that. So maybe you're just showing a side of yourself that you haven't. Good news here is we see the lovers in the crowning position, so people are gonna like what it is that you have to show or what you have to share. All right, so let's, let's go into the 10 of cups uh, with a couple of notes here. Messages from the past, karmic things that could be holding you back. The 10 of cups reverse is a people-pleasing card, and it's saying, I need to make these folks around me happy, just like the star reversed is. The, the folks that you're trying to make happy are typically blood relatives, very close friends, or your partners in life, like your uh, husband, wife, etc. So this is saying knowing basically when and where it's important to, to be there for your partner or for the people that you love, but also not to lose yourself and not to do it at the detriment of yourself too. So there's a balancing act when it comes to these core familial or love relationships in our life. You don't have to make everyone happy. They shouldn't have that conditional so, sort of hold on you too. So in order for love to be unconditional, there has to be acceptance and encouragement, especially if you're going to deviate a little bit from expectation. And I think that's what's coming through is um, you're just going to say no. You're going to be your own person. And if it's beautiful um, love that has none of those sort of like strings attached, then everything's going to be okay. Unconditional love will, will stand the test of time and any sort of issues that pop up. So just trust that that is what's going on. We have the Seven of Cups here um, as we're looking at your uh, recent past. So some of you are in this moment of really trying to figure out what next? Why this? How did I get here? This is a brainstorming card for me and, um, and also kind of like an audit. We were talking about auditing. So Auditing, just a fancy word for looking at things and trying to find patterns and trying to find any issues. Um, it might help to look at the traditional seven of cups, so I'll pull it up while we're talking. But the, um, the main thing here is that you're not discounting anything. If you've ever been in a brainstorming session, and I'm sure most of you have, uh, you know that you want to record all ideas when you're brainstorming. You don't want to throw anything out because you're never sure exactly which one might be able to be combined with the other. There might be a good element here. Maybe a day or two later, something that you thought was crazy now suddenly seems amazing. So record, explore, consider, and then when you're ready, uh, come upon a decision. Um, 
the seven of cups is showing the power of partnership when it comes to that someone else may able may be able to help you see patterns that you can't see in your in your own sort of like um, time and energy but what I mentioned back at the beginning was there might be an ebb of flow where uh, ebb and flow this month where you do a little bit of work on your on yourself and by yourself and come to a meeting or come to a group with that uh, and this is very much again I, I like to use music as an example what a band would do maybe the drummer has a certain beat that they've put down maybe the uh, lyricist in the group has written some of the lyrics but there's no song and they work with um, maybe someone on the guitar and say hey how about how would this sound or whatever so you work together and you find the connections so your piece may not seem complete but when it's brought into all the patchwork of the whole something's something beautiful is going to happen so don't overthink take what you have bring it and it looks like there's a partnership or a pairing of the minds or of material here that might actually make something better when you combine it okay so sometimes it takes two uh, and in this particular situation it could be something beautiful when that happens okay we have here a beautiful card in your crowning position the lovers um, it's so interesting that the devil card came right after it let me pull the traditional cards as well because they illustrate it a little bit better this one does a good job too um, but basically I always like to say that the devil's just a, a low frequency version of the lovers card but when you look at the Rider Waite Smith uh, version of it it is so obvious um, and it's really kind of cool to to see that and to, to, to decide to yourself like what is it that I'm trying to do to avoid this okay so this is what the universe is offering you but this is the block so let's look at the traditional cards and work it out and then we'll look at the new cards um, and look at it all right so can you see the similarities it's basically the the same couple but uh, instead of being in the garden of eden obviously they're in a darker place and they're chained together instead of the angel <laughs> they have a representation of what's holding them together personified by the devil but it's basically the same we have two angels in both cards we have two people in both cards one is free one is chained um, and that's basically it and it's the limits that basically define this card it's scary to look at sometimes but really if we take the figure out at the back that we still have the lovers and they're just chained together and so it's the same energy so what we want to look at this is why i was kind of talking about conditional uh in your sort of your energy and your your desire and your wheel wheelhouse this is you um, someone shouldn't come in and try to, to change that and someone shouldn't judge you for what it is that you're bringing forth. If they are, then it wasn't the true love that you thought it was. Um, a situation can, can look really good on the outside. You get on the inside and you realize it's kind of like an apple. Maybe nice red and shiny on the outside but rotten on the core. So you're going to see something for what it is. And uh, for many of you, if you just follow your path of truth, you can avoid the devil card. The good news in this spread is the devil's reversed. So it's revealed. And what it's doing is liberating the lovers here. So releasing something that's toxic, releasing something that's limiting, it can simply be a, a thought, folks. This figure is just a figure and it's just a symbol. So the devil can be a thought like, I can't do this. It won't work out. They won't like me. I will fail. All of those thoughts constitute devil energy. This can be, I love what I'm doing. I can't wait to share this. Um, I'm, I'm confident that my friends or my family will support me in whatever this path is. So love, light, confidence, higher energies, fear, anxiety, all those sort of lower energies. That's, that's all it has to be. We put an angel on one and a devil on the other just to help us see, um, but it doesn't have to mean that that's a literal sort of thing. Um, let's take a closer look at these two cards because this lover, uh, lover's card does show Cupid and Cupid's bow there. So for some of you, there could be a really beautiful synchronistic um, meeting of somebody and it just, it just clicks. And if it is, then that's divine, uh, divinely decreed. So you've been waiting for this connection to happen. You've been a part of the manifestation and um, don't second guess it. If you feel it and they feel it, perfect. This is also the biggest magnet card I could probably pull in the major arcana. Um, it's saying your love and passion attract other people and other people who have a similar energy like attracts like. The more you love and accept yourself, the more you love what you're doing, the more you love where you're at, 
the more you bring other people who have their life sorted. Um, when you do something that doesn't s sort of sync up with that, that's when you bring people in that test or, or somehow pull you away from that higher frequency. Remember that the wolf spider doesn't spin webs. Um, and so you're not going to get caught in someone else's web and you don't have to spin webs to get what you want this month. I, I picked a totem that was completely independent of webs. So the web that we see in this devil card is avoidable. The devil card was reversed. And it's basically, we could just say, I'm going to mind my business. You can mind your business. Um, I'm not going to force you to do something. Please don't force me to do something either. That, that simple. That's all the devil card is indicating this month. And if you mind your business, if you stay on your path and instead choose to work your passion and be in your light and uh, trust in what the universe is placing in front of you, then good things will happen. Okay. So very easy to see how to step or hop or jump past the devil card this month. It's just about not worrying about other people's drama and not creating drama. And if you see yourself starting to kind of step into the, that dramatic role, just pull back and think it's not worth it. It's not, this person's not worth my time. This situation's not worth my energy. And historically, it's only kind of created havoc. So you're going to choose to invest differently. The uh, one card pull that I did on the short the other day on the YouTube short, it was about the six of pentacles. So we can pull a little bit of that energy here, which is basically deciding, do I get something back from this energetic ex exchange? And if you're not, why are you doing it? Right. Um, so you can listen to that short if you want a little download on that as well. All right. This is how you're coming through right now. We have the two of wands energy, which is beautiful. This is a great complement to the magician or to the star energy because it helps you stay focused. So here the two of wands is indicated with a couple of bows here. Uh, but traditionally we would see a person with two wands and either a crystal ball or a globe. And basically what's going on with that is they're saying, I know what I want. I know where I'm at. This is where this is how I'm going to get there. It's a planning and a recalibrating card. So again, you need to sort of be able to visualize and check in and do that sort of internal audit to make sure everything's okay. Um, you're coming through as someone that's thoughtful, that's capable, and people wanna know what's the plan. Literally, they could be asking you, what do you think? What do you want? What's the plan? What's your feedback on this? What's wrong? There'll be an, uh, sort of this question posed to you, and what you say in return manifests, changes course, shapes their opinion. So take some time this month and decide before you're asked, what do I think about this? What do I want with that? Where am I at? What's the big wish for me this month? If I could accomplish, change, or experience a single thing, what would it be? And then if you know, usually you do, especially if you have a, a nine to five job and there's certain tasks, people are gonna ask you for a report, a progress update on things. So before whoever it is, coworker, boss, or client comes to you, just be ready. Have a few sentences. You don't have to have everything. Say, hey, by the way, um, just want to give you an update on what's going on with this, this, and this. That is going to instill confidence in the other person. They'll think to themselves, you know, that person has it. You have it together. Um, so people want to know what you think. So do your homework this month and figure out what do I think and then tell them in advance. Uh, get some stuff prepared if you're going to do some sort of a preparation. Uh, I'm sorry, some, some, some sort of a uh, presentation. The preparation is key to that. And, um, and then just trust and, and move forward in that. All right. Let's look at your environment card. We have the four of pentacles, which can be someone else holding back a little bit. Maybe someone else's shield is upright and, and is kind of fully engaged and they don't want to let you in 100%. So the four of pentacles can be limiting. Um, if it's not you, and I don't think it is you in this particular situation, the challenge for you is how can I get someone else to open up? I like that this particular artist made this a foundational card. In fact, we even see the, uh, the word power on the top. So a lot of times people are holding back to hold on to their power. Let's look at your traditional Four of Pentacles card because it does show the, the sort of clinging energy that's typically a piece of this. And since this is more about the people around you, I would say your challenge would be to, uh, sometimes it's to open up a little bit to them so that they feel safe that they can do the same. All right, so here's your traditional card, and I think it illustrates the point very nicely. So we see someone holding on. 
They're holding on not because they have to, but because they're afraid to let go. They're afraid that if I let this piece of information out, I won't be, ne- I won't be needed. So someone may be holding back on training you. Isn't this frustrating when you step into a new job and people sort of like just piecemeal out the important pieces because they want to seem important. Um, they need to sort of have some sort of power of knowledge. It can also be someone that doesn't want to pay you what you deserve. I have now the um, solar plexus activating as I'm talking about this. So there could be someone that wants to see just how much you'll give before that meltdown that I saw in my dreams happens. So you're going to avoid the meltdown and you're going to let them know because we have limited resources, I can focus on this. We're going to have to take out this, this, and this. When you tell them they can't have what they want, they'll say, well, wait a second. Well, but, but then you can say, well, if you want that, then I need a little bit more here, here, and here. So um, set up realistic expectations, cut out what you know is not realistic. And if things continually fall short of expectations, they're going to give you more resources, whether it's time, energy, money, staff, etc. They'll open up a little bit. Okay, so your job is to communicate why this is unrealistic <laughs> and you can't build unless you get that. So we have a bunch of little sandcastles here, but sandcastles are not enough. We need a firmer foundation. So that's the main challenge is it looks like there's a resource block environmentally. There's someone holding on to something. There could be they could be doing that out of fear because they haven't been supported. So your job is to be a little bit more of an investigator to also um, assuage their concerns and let them know that this is a team effort, that they are important, that they have a place at the table, and that will help. But you can't give away everything. So if there is someone in your life and uh, they've just gotten used to getting things without paying or without reciprocating, then you're, you're resetting the scales a little bit right now. All right, let's look at hopes, fears, and opportunity. We did get the, um, the, the moon card. I expected the moon card to come somewhere because there's always a dog and either a wolf or a coyote, depending on the illustration. So this is perfect. Plus, we just got off of a full moon. So as we look at this, creativity and emotional sensitivity, it's probably going to be still at a high point over the next month. Um, use that to your advantage. Use your dreams like I do to inform, to direct, to protect Uh, pay attention to the stuff you don't want to do as well. That's the most powerful thing with the moon card. It says, if I know what I, (laughs) what I'm afraid to sort of look at, then I'm fully capable of handling anything that comes my way. Some of us are afraid of like what finances might sort of show up in our life and what we need to fix there. We're afraid of talking to someone about something and what they might say. So when we do research, when we just face our fear, once that's done, it's sort of like everything else is easy. So the moon card is saying, listen, you've you've got everything set up here this month to put you in a positive trajectory. In fact, your outcome card is the king of pentacles, which I love. But there are a couple of things holding you back, mostly fear. This is hopes, fears, and opportunities, and this is the near future. It's not the outcome. This is the outcome. So there's a little test here, and the way that I'm reading this devil card is getting out of other people's business, trying not to weave a web, not not letting them sort of ensnare you. This has to do with honesty and also kind of accountability of what role you might have played. When you step away from that and focus on the power cards this month, we have the magnetic lovers. It's right where your head is at. So if you're focusing on uh, receiving these downloads, being authentic and sharing this with love, then we have a breakthrough or breakout moment. We have you being able to manifest more and people wondering like what else you have to say. And then this limitation here is temporary. We've got the king of pentacles, the king of pentacles on your outcome. So sometimes all you have to do is ask or shine a light on what isn't working. And if something's ridiculously under-supported, under-funded, under-utilized, um, underestimated, some sort of less than, basically, then once that light has been shine on that and people realize this doesn't make any sense, there's more of an opening here that happens. So what we got going on here is pretty cool. We've got an open door, a breakthrough, and a lot of resources flowing your way. Yes, you're going to have to move through the not so fun devil and uh, four of pentacles and moon, but these are just, this is environment. This is a 
mental or sort of like temporary block. And this is just understanding that that was a necessary shift that had to happen. Sometimes we, we choose, we don't have to, but we choose to go through 10 of swords, devil or moon energy to get us out of something. So if we, uh, if we don't experience someone that disappoints us uh, or something that gets under our skin or something that really makes us uncomfortable, sometimes we just stay. Um, so this is like the wind blowing a dandelion seed free so that it can go somewhere else and take root and grow. There's something that if you were to stay, you wouldn't have that growth potential. You're like that, that little seed pod that needs to be carried off by the wind. Um, and something has to dislodge you. And so for many of you, there could be a person that said they were going to do something and didn't or lied or disappointed you or a situation where a contract was broken. By the way, this could be a broken contract, um, in which case I feel like you'll be able to get free of this, especially if the other person isn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, this can be cutting your losses from that and understanding that there's much more to gain by stepping away and having your freedom. So I see for some of you, there is this sort of necessary change or shift, but coming out of it makes you stronger and the road ahead is brighter. And any limits or frustrations that you felt in the past, they're not part of the future. They're just something that you need to evaluate so that you don't repeat them, so that you've fully integrated lessons. And that's what, what this life is basically made up of. We keep going back and repeating a class. It's not, it's not like, you know, grade school where typically if you get a, you know, C or something or better, you, you pass. Um, in life, it's a lot pickier sometimes. The universe really wants to make sure we've locked it in. And so you kind of only pass with an A. And so you'll keep repeating versions of this until you, you pass. Um, it gets a little bit easier each time, usually as you've started to, to go through it, but you're not going to let go of a particular lesson until you've fully embodied it. So again, when we go back to the, the universe of the world card and uh, Shiva at the center, Shiva really wants you to stomp out this particular karmic lesson. And it will be rewarded in a great way once you've done that, okay? New job, new, new sense of, of uh, confidence and power, uh, more abundance and opportunity flowing in, good stuff ahead, all right? So I see you on the precipice of really letting go of something and feeling much more secure about self, uh, resources, just feeling more grounded in general, which is good, which is great actually, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna now expand the forecast and we're gonna look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. Each one of these is multifaceted, so I'll do my best to break it down for the general audience here. Okay, so uh, as I take a look at the health card, just a quick disclaimer, I'm helping you look at metaphysical information. If there's anything going on with your physical health or your mental health, you'll obviously wanna work with a professional. Same thing with finances. Uh, I'm really just kinda helping you make better decisions so energetically you can open up doors in your life. With that disclaimer being um, put in there, let's go ahead now and take a look and see what your health message is. So we have an energy card, but the energy is reversed. Some of you are just working at half tank, like you're, you're a little bit depleted energetically. And we talked about with the Six of Pentacles what that can mean sometimes. It's because you've chosen perhaps to give a lot to someone who doesn't return that. The devil is a very greedy card and it will take as much as one is willing to give it. And when you work with devil type energy, you can always recognize it in, in your day-to-day -day life. You don't need me to read who personifies or what personifies the devil. It just doesn't feel good. But typically, there isn't a great way to fix that. We typically need to release it and move beyond it um, because it'll just hold us still. So there's something that is a, uh, it's sort of like a time or energy sink. And your main focus at the beginning of this month is how can I release that? How can I reallocate my energy? And how can I say no when necessary too? So boundaries, using no uh, as, as a sentence, as a, it's a full sentence in and of itself. Isn't that amazing? Yes and no, you can just have one word and no is super powerful. So use it as much as you need to in order to reclaim power and peace of mind. The other thing is just make um, take time to do stuff that will help you recalibrate. So we see someone here in the forest, right? So for some of us, we need to be in nature. Some of us need to open up a book, uh, go to a museum, take a swim. Whatever your recalibration moment is, 
make some time for that. And it's not just, I'm not even talking fun. I'm just saying letting go and doing nothing. Um, just sort of like re reconnecting and plugging into what matters for you. Okay. That's going to be essential. Looking at the cards, um, I'm going to go back to El Diablo for a second. The devil card is asking us to let something go. So maybe it's caffeine, maybe it's nicotine, maybe it's your erratic sleep patterns or whatever it is. This is saying I'm ready. The card is reversed. So that's very good. It's saying I recognize my part in this. I don't want it anymore. I'm going to do something about it. Uh, and I have a plan. So put an action plan in, in place to do something that makes you feel healthier and happier. And it can be small or it can be big. Some of you are deciding to change your environment. It could be toxic relationship, toxic workplace, or even like where you're living. It's a change for the better. We see that it's going to bring good things when we focus on where your head's at how this is going to help you, also how other people see you. Everything clears up because of that. So that's good. Uh, Seven of Cups and the Devil can be excess. Um, uh, usually I would go more to like the three and the nine for that. I think with the Seven of Cups is uh, excess is it's overthinking. Um, so sometimes we, we fixate on a person, place, or thing too much, sometimes we worry about something too much. So the best that you can do is the best that you can do. Give it your all and then move on and then maybe you can do better next time. But it's not about beating yourself up because we never have everything in front of us. Even when you're reading cards, you're reading cards for that moment in time, things can and will shift as you move forward because of your free will in the universes. So we prepare and then we react based on our preparation and our ability to discern. So that's all you have to do is do your best in the moment. Prepare as much as possible and then be prepared for things to kind of take a veer off path because being able to uh, basically freestyle a little bit is going to be important when it comes to surviving life in general. We have to be willing and able to just have a good time with the unexpected. Um, relationships are really important this month. Ten of Cups and the Lovers. Uh, one thing that we're going to talk about this when we get into just the relationship read itself, but some of you are at a point where maybe you've met someone or you figured out something in your life that you love and you want to uh, really make a part of your life and you, you want to share that with your family, but they may not accept it. That's their loss. This is happening whether they're on board or not. Okay, so we'll look at that when we talk about relationships in a moment. Love yourself enough to do what matters most to you. I see rewards. I see happiness. And if these kind of like connections in your life are not meant to come along to that part of the journey. That's their loss. And that's all. That's really pretty much it. The moon does show me that um, some of you are having heightened sensitivity this month, which is why it's important when we were talking about conflict negotiation, etc., that you really take a moment and step back a little bit so that you're not wasting time fighting. I always like to talk about the moon card being a, a path where this can be a distraction. It's not about a binary right versus wrong or, you know, in your instinct versus what you're trained to do. There's something else beyond all of this, which is just saying move on, move to the next kind of like fork in the road. All right. That's everything for health. It's pretty manageable this month. There's something you want to let go of. There's a big opening happening and there's a little bit of a tug of war between who you are and what you want to be and what your family wants or the people around you. But you're going to trust what you want and what you know um, and they'll come along, they'll eventually upgrade or they'll step away and that's okay. All right, let's move to uh, your wealth card. We just looked at health, let's look at wealth. So we have solitude, which is such a nicely aligned card to the wolf spider, right? Because everything that I was talking about with that is that it's a very solitary card. So you don't have to sort of sit in that energy forever, but there is power in this card and there is power in kind of taking time to yourself and deciding where do I stand? What am I thinking here? Do I even need to take that criticism or that idea and incorporate it? Or should I just kind of flesh this out? You need space. When I used to work in a traditional office, uh, the one thing that drove me crazy, I, I, I'd been working long enough and at the point in time before open offices happened. So like late 90s, early 2000s, you usually had an office where there were cubicles. It wasn't until the mid 
uh, like I would say 2010 uh, and after that they started to get this great idea that let's break down all the walls and everybody sit in the same room. Now with COVID, I'm sure they realized that wasn't such a great idea. But one thing that was annoying with the completely open office, and I worked in a place where they put us all in this fishbowl, <laughs> and um, you could smell what your what the person was eating across from you. You could hear what was going on in the phone. You could hear the whole sea of everybody talking, uh, and you knew what they had on their computers and their phones. It was like, how do you focus? You had to actually, ironically, put on like noise-canceling headphones, and people were putting these little things around their computer. So they were creating um, all of these privacy things in the open space, which ironically was supposed to make everyone work together. We need space. Relationships need space. Um, learning requires space and privacy. So take what you need right now to do that. Thankfully, um, post-COVID, or we're, we're still in it, but like post-lockdown, I should say, uh, there's an understanding that there can be maybe some off-site work or a breakout room that you can go to. There's something that's going to be gained when you have that privacy, okay? So it doesn't mean that you're going to permanently stay there. That's not, that's not good for teamwork either. But some, some privacy, some time to yourself so you can formulate. That's important. Because I know that I, I would have a hard time being able to get anything done because people would just stop by your desk and talk, right? So there's that nice balance this month between being there and then also thinking and giving yourself time to nurture your thoughts. And that's what's happening here. Distraction, a lack of focus, mental train of thought is being lost. Um, and let's see if I can find the card again. Uh, sometimes this card can feel very very sort of um, incapacitating because it's like I have all this stuff to focus on and I don't know what to do. So um, basically just a little bit of space will help you out. There's more than one way to get this done and you have more power than maybe other people are willing to let you exert here. So speaking your mind, breaking free from anyone that won't let you try something new, the limits are the big pitfall this month. Don't sign a contract that you don't want to sign by all means, especially uh, with this particular card, you, 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 um, the devil always wins when you sign a contract with it. So if there's too much, like uh, I, 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 I remember when I was looking for some houses, there were some that required two years up front. Uh, I was like, no, who knows where you're going to be in two years. There was one place where they wanted you to pay a year ahead. And I thought, what? No, I'll buy a house instead. Um, and sometimes there's crazy stipulations that go into contracts, right? Uh, for some of you that are in a traditional work situation, there could be a non-competitive clause that maybe you don't want to do. Intellectual property, for those of you that are art, artistic, whether you're a musician or a designer or an illustrator, you want to make sure that you can maintain control. So control, freedom, options. There should always be that flexibility in a contract. I think that's the most important thing when I look at this. Someone likes you enough to want to offer you a contract. You have the ability to push back and say you're asking for too much. And they are. Um, they need to give a little bit more to you. So fight for what matters. Have a clear point of view on why. Look at best practices. Look at other examples that um, exist out there. And that's going to be super important uh, to help you get what you want in the end here. It does look like you're in a better trajectory or a better path, and I love that. The King of Pentacles tells me that if this isn't good enough, say no, uh, wait. There'll be something better along the road here. The star card, again, at, combined with the world, is so amazing for those of you that want to launch a business, uh, make an announcement, uh, somehow put product out into the world. This looks really, really good. Again, looking at contract, uh, making sure that the the ability to license it or the legalities have been put into place, that's that's the only sort of like stepping stone here that hasn't yet been sort of sorted out. But everything else looks good. So get a good lawyer this month if you're starting something new and have them take a look at that contract before you sign every single page. OK, uh, but by and large, I like where you're headed. I think you can get past this. I think for some of you, it's just negotiation or common sense. If you're looking for work or looking for an opportunity, it's closer than you think. Talk to friends. Someone may have a good lead for you, and that's going to be a, a stepping off point for many of you. Uh, and again, with the solitude piece, you may feel like you're isolated or that you don't have a way out of something, but you do. Um, this card reminds me a lot of a scene from What Dreams May Come, which is a, I believe it was in the 90s. I can't remember the exact date, but it was one of Robin Williams' 
um, films, and it was about him connecting with his partner who had passed, his wife, and she was a painter. And this is almost exactly like her purplish tree that she would paint, and he would... Um, he Well, she was living, he had passed, that's right. Um, so in his dream world, which was heaven, he could see her paintings, that was right. <laughs> I just I swapped it around in my head. Uh, but, but the whole title of the movie is What Dreams May Come. And it was about making a connection that you didn't think you could make. So if we take that little piece from this picture, I would say you can reach across boundaries that others don't think you can reach across. So send that note to someone who you may think may not answer your, your call or message and just think, why not? Send it out there. Uh, that message in the bottle will be received or you have a good chance of accomplishing something that people think you can't. And that's what I'm picking up from that little image that reminds me of the movie. Um, and that was the key thing is that they weren't supposed to connect across you know, time and space, but they were able to because their love was strong enough, right? So if you love something enough, if you trust something enough, if you really put your heart and soul into it, you can open up a door. You can open up a path that people are like, how did you do it? And you're like, I was following my heart. Um, listen to Nicholas. I found a way. So find a way. All right, let's go to love and relationships. Magic manifesting. We have Isis here, really beautiful card. Um, the card is reversed, so trust yourself. Isis is basically the high priestess, or you can also uh, put a, the magician energy here, but I really get a high priestess vibe when I look at her. Um, your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. So notice how the ankh on this particular card is right over the throat. So your words, your thoughts and your words are super powerful. So pay attention to the little things that we do in speech in particular. If you are calling someone, most people don't do that anymore. It's all text, I know. But when you have a phone call with someone or a meeting, uh, like imagine that you're getting a place at a restaurant and you're just you're going by yourself. And you say to the, if the server says it's just you, or if you say it's just one, never say that. Say, I'd like a table here. How many? One. Not just one. One, because you're powerful. If you pick up the phone and, uh, and you're talking to someone, they're like, oh, hi, who's there? It's just me. Don't ever say just. You're not a just. It's you. You're you and you're powerful. Um, and when you are trying to make something happen, See yourself as an equal and powerful participant and equation to making something work. So if it's a business partnership, you're not just lucky to have the other person. They're also lucky to have you. And together, you're going to work your magic. Two parts to the whole. Two pieces to the magic sort of um, brew that you're, you're creating, the concoction that you're making. So... You are magical. You are powerful. You don't want to limit yourself in this equation. And when you see yourself as that, then you start to create synchronicities. I can do this. I am worth this. I am ready for this. I am, I am, I am. Not just me. Not maybe me. Uh, not, I'm not sure if this is going to happen or if I'm worth this. Be more confident, at least as you're reprogramming your thoughts. This is going to help you in the power balance, which is happening in relationships, you're, you don't want to limit yourself. And ISIS is coming through to say, see yourself as powerful, as worthy, and you'll manifest relationships that validate that power. Okay. Let's connect the message from ISIS to the three different levels of relationship that I look at. Um, and I've already, like, I think the first and most important relationship is the relationship with yourself. And what she's saying is you're good company to yourself. And that's, I should probably do a fourth. My readings just, <laughs> I try to keep them concise. But I think there's four relationship types. One is you, okay? And then one is who you're, th then we'll look at yourself, who you're with. Um, for those of you that are looking for someone and those of you that are single. But single and self can kind of be put together. So for, for, for those of you that are just focusing on yourself right now, I would say the most important thing is to see yourself as worthy. Let's look at those of you that are partnered up, and then I'll revisit those of you that are single. If you're partnered up, there is a little bit of a tug of war going on between you and the one that you love. Um, I see, for some of you, you might have a big family, or you may just have a close-knit group. This can be chosen family as well, like 
friends and people in your life that you feel very close to without a blood sort of uh, relationship. Um, and I see that being like top of mind. But there is this little sort of tug between who you are and who you need to be. And there is this revelation coming out announcement or shift. Uh, this could simply be a decision like I don't want to work anymore or I want to go to work or I want to start a family or I don't want a family. Something that is kind of at odds with, with someone that you care about. And so you're going to talk about the different opportunities. You're not going to be binary where it's just like this or the highway. You'll, you guys have to kind of talk this out a little bit. I do see resolution happening here with two of wands, but there is someone that's very resistant and, and holding back. So if the partner or the other person that you're working with, because this can be, I would say it's the most important relationship in your life. So it can be family or love. Um, but if that other person, again, is putting strings or is holding back or holding on, then your job is to go down the center of the moon card, which is saying, actually, there's a really cool card in the Afro goddess deck where she parts the waters. I'll see if I can pull it up while we're talking. But um, the main message here is, I'm not going to be stuck in the middle. I'm not going to play um, sort of like favorites here. I have to move forward. There we go. Um, so this is an, an amazing moon card. One of my favorite decks as well here. So in this card, we see that the whole purpose of the moon is to move on and to face your fears and to just kind of get to the next point. So this conflict or this sort of maybe like difference of opinion it's there to help you solidify, no, I really want this. No, I really need this. So if you're firm on that and the person loves you enough, they'll follow. And if not, then you know that um, you can find an upgrade. You can do better. Ultimately, though, when we look at the crowning card and the outcome card, we do see the lovers. We do see the king of pentacles. We do see you getting what you're seeking. So when it comes to accomplishing something or getting to the next point in the road, that's really where you're headed. This is just maybe the other person's fear stepping in because this is a fear based card. This is a fear based card and this can be a limit or getting stuck in someone's fear. So let's assume the best of your partner and say that it's fear that's holding them back from accepting or embracing what you want to do. So your job is to paint the landscape and say this is why it's going to work. And then we, we see buy in once that happens. OK, because there's a lot of love, a lot of love. And there's a lot of vision and thinking that's going into this. So lean into that. And plus, the star card is very hard uh, to step away from. So you have a magnetic energy, which is going to put you in the right position this month. OK, a little bit of karmic stuff coming up, a little bit of tug of war and power. Now, we have to look at these two as well. Um, I like to kind of not immediately go to negative, but devil and moon together can be a secret. It can also be a third party. It can be a contract broken. And when this happens, you have to really look at things and think, am I okay with this? Only you can decide that. Whatever decision you decide to make, it looks like it's okay. It also looks like you can leave with grace and dignity, and that's always important. And you might simply say to someone, not again, or I see this and we need to talk about it, or goodbye. Um, but either way, there is a sort of conversation that needs to happen when someone does something that's not right. And some of you are sorting through that. And the world card is going to sort of give you an upgrade, whether you push through it or you move out, move on. OK, uh, it's these cards, the star and the world are upgrades. So whatever you do here, it's going to upgrade you like the computer. If you're looking for love right now, you need to get out of a situation or let go of something first. This is a restrictive card. This is a restrictive card. Focus on getting healthier, fixing your finances, saying no, moving, whatever you need to do to get settled first, that's key. This can also be Capricorn. <clears throat> Even with this Capricorn though, um, for those of you that are meeting one, there's a little bit of a tug of war. And so the most important thing for you is to not let somebody sort of like bulldoze you uh, just because they want something more or they speak louder. You're really going to find a way to stand your ground, be yourself, be strong. I really want you to look at contracts this month and feel confident and comfortable with any contracts that you sign. Okay, <clears throat> it's interesting that as I'm talking about this, I feel the throat stuff that Isis is showing us with the Ankh. 
So I think those of you looking for a new relationship, the biggest karmic thing that I'm picking up on, because I had to really keep drinking as much fluid as possible, is how to speak your truth, how to articulate yourself, and whether it's getting the word no out or something else, uh, focus on the power of stating intentions, desires, frustrations, whatever, just using communication. I also see, for many of you, a wonderful connection here in the form of the King of Pentacles. So we have an Earth energy coming through, which could be Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, a fellow Virgo. Um, this can also just be you coming out of this feeling really strong and really like yourself, which is great. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely some Earth energy coming through this month. So know yourself so that you are ready for that opportunity when it comes. Those of you that are single and happy, good for you. Good time to be single and happy. I think the key focus for you is on improving your finances and improving your work situation or your environment. Um, something there needs to shift and it will. And also lots of magnetic energy. Whether you're single and looking or single and happy, lots of socializing going on this month. There are a lot of people that want to connect with you. So you get to be discerning. Definitely with the devil you want to filter and you want to be discerning. Uh, but I feel like there's a lot of people coming in and out of your life, so uh, that's why we probably got the shield card too, deciding when to hold the shield up, when to let the shield down, which we talked about earlier. All right, let's move on to your destiny card. Destiny is not something written in a book that we have no choice in the matter of. Destiny is something that we're writing and we're thinking and we're working and we're acting upon in each and every moment. So this is a checkpoint on what kind of destiny you're writing. And uh, this card says it's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. So the crossing of the bridge would also, you could infer from this that you would not blow up the bridge. And so sometimes when we, uh, when we step away from a relationship, those bridges are broken. So you could be mending bridges. You could also be deciding to leave a not so good relationship or connection, like I said, with grace and keep the door open, um, allowing that person to eventually grow and heal and change and they can contact you when they're ready but this card is saying i need to keep moving you're either with me or you're going to work on yourself right now and no judgment either way but i have to move forward but i don't have to destroy all of the connections that i've made it's not worth the time and energy there's a lot of regret that goes into it you never know when you're going to run into someone again so this is saying to be really mindful of how you step away from things uh, because you don't want to have to also meet this person in another lifetime. Um, so if we can kind of like leave with dignity, grace, and no sort of strings attached, then all is good and the contract is served. And I think that's the, the key thing here. Okay, let's take a look at your big idea. The big idea is one thing that you can focus on to be successful. It, let's just kind of take a look at the cards and see what it wants to come through. All right. <laughs> um, there are certain cards that are like cousins and brothers or sisters in tarot. I would call the Seven of Swords and the Devil cousins. Like the Five of Swords and Seven of Swords are siblings, but these cards work together and the, the Devil and the Moon work together. There are certain energies uh, when you read enough that you're like, all right, it's just a matter of time before I see some of the other trickster cards come through. So the big idea this month is to move beyond the limits, to walk the higher path, and to see things for what they truly are. So the, the title of this card is Futility, but I don't really feel like that's the case. Um, so I see the Seven of Swords as a chance to cut losses and, and not waste time and energy with someone that doesn't deserve it. In the Five of Swords, you can't win because the person won't let you win because they're stuck in their head. With the Seven of Swords, you you're fine. The, the key to that one is just both of them is moving on, is walking away. A lot of times with the Seven of Swords, you need to call someone out on something or you need to rectify something that's just wrong. So I'm going to pull the traditional card. And what you'll see here is a couple ways you can look at this. You can imagine that the person is looking at what they've been through and they're cutting their losses and taking what they can and moving forward. It can also be someone stealing away in the night or trying to get away with something. Um, when it's the latter, it doesn't work, and it's not going to work this month uh, if someone tries to do that with you, in part because you're tuning into my reading, in part because you are a 
really tuned in individual anyway, so you would probably pick up on it. Um, what I like about this particular illustration is we see the swords in the sky, in the clouds, and it's what you make of it. So when somebody does something that's disappointing, on some levels, yes, you feel it. You feel a flush of energy go through you. You might even feel a little bit warm or angry or whatever. But then in, in the same breath, you can think they're also cheating themselves of an opportunity. And you could feel more. It's not like you're not feeling sorry for them, but you're, you're understanding that they're making their life harder by going down this path. And you're just going to choose to disengage, disengage. They don't want to. Maybe they don't want to talk to you. Maybe they don't want to uh, do what's right. Maybe they just don't care, but you're not benefiting from connecting to that. Um, it's also just about being honest with yourself. So if you say you're ready to do something, but you kind of feel that you're not sort of ready to do something, wait until mind, body, and spirit, you can say, for instance, with a job, I quit. Or if you're going to declare love to someone and say, I love you, you can mean it. If you're ready to get a divorce, you can say those words and mean it. We have to really feel it. And if there's a little bit of doubt in there, that's when this energy steps in and says, are you sure? Um, and, uh, and it tests you, okay? So get confident and secure and grounded. You will by the end of the month on whatever it is that you need and then state it. And then this goes away. It's, it's poof, it's in the air, right? Most of swords can be mental. Uh, so the cards look scary when you start to learn to read, but a lot of them are just in, in, in our heads. And one thing that the Sun and Moon deck does wonderfully is to show all of swords in the sky. So it seems like it's bigger than it is. It's going to fade away. You've got better things to focus on. So a little disappointment, a little something that was supposed to happen that didn't happen, but it's what you make of it. So don't make it a big deal. Just focus on the next thing, okay? Because, you know, I like to add and subtract with all the major arcana, or sorry, the minor arcana. Um, if you just let go of one of these swords, imagine that you just drop it through the sky. You got the six of swords, which is moving on. And that's what you want to do. In swords, we typically want to reduce because once you get to the ace or, um, yeah, I would say ace and six, they're the best in the minor arcana um, until we get to the court cards. That's it. So it's usually about letting go when you're looking at swords. What can I release? What can I let go of? How can I take some power back? How can I take one of these swords and, and be like an ace? Um, so let something go and then you can move on. And that's what I see with that. Okay. Blessings and blocks. Let's see what else the universe wants to show us in the way of a big opportunity and something that we need to transmute just a little bit. Okay. Blessing first, block next. Okay, these are uh, already I'm seeing a shift in energy, which is good. Let's take a look at your blessing card. Um, I love wands when it comes to opportunities and development. I really love this illustration too. What is she doing? She's taking her magic wand, which is the energy of the, the Isis card. Um, she has the star in it, which is right at the center of your spread. And she's basically saying, hey, I have this idea, or hey, this is who I am. And I believe in it. And it creates this self-fulfilling prophecy that we see beneath it. So the princess in this deck would be a page. Um, the page is sending and receiving. And she's realizing that her power is in the star. Got two stars, basically. So when she reaches for what's possible, when she believes in that, she manifests it in the way of the star. Okay? So when you communicate, when you demonstrate, when you kind of like show up, bring that energy of being the manifester, of being Isis or the magician and saying, I can do this. I will do this. I am doing this. And um, that's your blessing this month is in that ability to see it and convey it. And it's not in words because wands can be showing up and showing and embodying and believing. So the thoughts and the actions are very, very important and the embodiment of it is very very important so really feel something mind body and spirit when you speak if you speak when you speak then when it's 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 of value because sometimes that's what i that's that's how i try to approach social media if i have nothing to say or if i'm busy on other things i just kind of keep it quiet and then when i say something i try to make it of value because there's enough noise out there so i try to make 
make a splash when when I say something and make it worthwhile. Otherwise, it's just noise. So make it make it matter, and it will. Okay, and reach higher, uh, and until proven otherwise, go as high as you can and see see what you can get. Your block this month is potentially distraction from extreme emotions. So the nine of cups can be extreme happiness. It can also be stress, anxiety, or sadness. And the nine of cups can sometimes just be us giving too much into the emotional whim. Um, the nine of cups is usually positive when it's upright. So you could be, I would say don't, what is it? Don't count your chickens before they've hatched. So basically make sure that before a celebration goes through or something really important that everything is done. Don't celebrate too fast. Don't celebrate too much, but do celebrate. It's basically about moderation. And if you're feeling sensitive or if you're going to a, um, a traditional vice that you used to use, again, we could use something that a lot of people do too much caffeine or too much eating, whatever it is. Just pull back a little bit and think, why am I doing this? And what am I avoiding? And how can I sort of like come back into the center? Okay. So it's an avoidable block. It's just self-medicating or going to extremes or letting emotions get the better of you. So you want to take a deep breath, slow down a little bit and get your bearings. All right, let's move now on to the viewers and readers choices and see what's coming through with all of this. All right. Let's take a look at the, the, uh, the spread here and see what's worthy of an, an additional sort of deep dive. I feel like it's always good to look at the, um, if the devil card comes up, it's something that we should explore a little bit and see what's coming through. So um, I would say, let's look at, let's just clarify, clarify the devil card, limits, um, secrets. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just clarify that card. Uh, particularly when it comes to limits. Okay, the next thing that I'd like to put out there for you to consider is um, this sort of power card with Isis. So I would say how to step into your power. And maybe the third one that we could vote on here is, let's see here. Uh, I like the two of wands and the seven of cups, which is all about exploring options. So how to be more decisive um, and maybe even just like open to whatever it is that you need to be focusing on. So you have a couple of options to focus on while I'm taking a look at the reader's choice. And for reader's choice, let's see, what is, I really want to help you get to the king of pentacles. So how do you open up the, the opportunity that really helps you manifest here with the Isis and King of Pentacles. So how can you manifest? Okay. So we have the Five of Swords and the Five of Swords is reversed. I talked about sibling cards and here we go. Seven and five usually work together. So the seven is when something is supposed to work out a certain way and it doesn't. And then the five is basically coming through to say, um, this is your chance to not let someone get under your skin. The five of swords is, as I said, someone who is reluctant to move on. I like how they pinned the person down here. And this can represent someone who's just sort of like, it's my way or no way. Um, or someone else is just kind of throwing themselves in front of you and saying, you can't pass because I won't let you. And it's kind of like a tantrum. Someone will throw a tantrum or they've got cotton in their ears and they're not listening. Um, so in order for you to be your best self and to get to this King of Pentacles energy, you might have to realize that that is not worth the energetic investment. Maybe in the past you put a lot of time and energy into mentoring someone or listening to someone. But in this moment in time, you're being asked to do what you need to do and not spend any more time or energy appeasing that person, arguing with that person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it could be a person that's connected to this and they're trying to hold you back. And there comes a point where sometimes you just you decide to again cut losses and say, "Well, I'll I'll take a different path. I'll start from scratch if I have to, but this isn't worth it because it's just the butting of heads and the wasting of time." So it's better to start fresh than to sometimes try to take something that's 
that's kind of covered in this energy of the other person and make it work, okay? So a fresh start and releasing a connection with someone or something that is not receptive to you. It's not worth it, okay? Consistently, we're getting, you got all the different cards here from the devil to the moon to the seven of swords to the five of swords, which is saying, you know exactly what's worth your time. You know if something's too good to be true and you know if something's too restrictive. Um, the cards, all of the cards that needed to come through to remind you of that did. And so message received, you're going to be fine. Let's go ahead now and see what you uh, asked of me. You want to see how to step into your power. All right. So the manifestation power is the really key thing here. And I would say it's the antithesis of that devil card too. So what can you do to kind of like not even have to deal with some of this other stuff that we've talked about today? Let's take a look and see what's coming through. All right. How can you step into your power? Because you have the star, you have the world, you have Isis, and you have King of Pentacles. And I'm tired of getting what not to focus on. So let's really focus on what to focus on. Two of Pentacles. Make a choice. Um, this is a very, and it was reversed, by the way. Uh, so with the Two of Pentacles, you're being asked to, once and for all, really decide what matters most. Six of Pentacles, you get, to, you get to kind of do almost everything that you want. But the Two of Pentacles, you, you're being asked to choose. And so there's always choices involved with the Twos. So whether it's Two of Wands or Two of Pentacles, it's a very sort of similar message here, which is, where do you stand? What do you want? How are you going to focus on that? If you try to do everything for everyone, then it's going to get a little tricky. So let one thing go. Focus or put it on the burner or delegate. So you can delegate, say no, or simply just sort of like let it be. Focus on the one thing. Let it grow. Let it sort of take its own momentum. Then you can come, come back and, and finish the other thing. But you need to really put all of your time and attention into one of the two things that it's kind of pulling you. And I know it can be challenging sometimes because there may be no clear-cut answer. Often is the case with everything but the Two of Cups, but Two of Swords, Two of Wands, and Two of Pentacles all are a little blurry despite being a harm, uh, harmonious number. So, uh, like, usually all the evens are numbers of harmony and all of the odds show change in movement. But with the Two, here it's sort of like, I don't know what, you, you're, you're trying to make everyone happy. So I would say, again, it's important to do what's right, to do what's best, to do what's most compelling, uh, what's most important, where you feel more invested, that's where you're going to see the most movement. That's where your power comes in, and that's how you can be impactful. Let's move along to your sun, rising, and moon messages. A reminder that, as always, you can use this for all aspects of your chart, but these are the most popular that people watch for. So the sun, for those of you that are born under Virgo, um, is going to just be the core of your personality. Rising is interesting because it's how we project or how we want to be perceived, and it's a checkpoint on that. How does the world see me? How am I showing up at work and at school and in social um, circumstances? The moon card, a lot of times, is a, a path of self-discovery. It's things that we hide, things that we might be afraid to look at. A lot of times it does play out in relationships. So let's, let's pull into each of these particular categories and see what's going on. All right. So let me get the cards drawn first, and then we'll go into each one of those. Sun, rising, moon. All right, some great messages. All right, let's begin with the sun sign messages. We have the Prince of Wands coming through for uh, the sun sign. And this is really, really nice, actually. So we have a knight. Princes are knights in this particular deck. So we see things moving forward. Um, this can be something that you've been trying to kind of like figure out what to do and you see the thought process itself moving forward. Uh, we also see for some of you people around you being mu much more receptive and wanting to work with you. Um, basically movement is the name of the game here. Movement with ideas, um, movement in general, and also you being able to take and inspire and move other people. Um, it's a really, really great card. Uh, one of the things, whenever I get the Prince of Wands or the Prince of Swords, I would say here is to make sure that you are, again, embodying what it is that you're saying. So with this one, people are going to look at you and say, uh, do you believe what you say? 
Uh, are you doing it in your day-to-day -day life? So there's going to be some accountability and some checking on that. So the more realistic you are and the more connected you are to that, the better. Because otherwise, someone will say, hey, I saw you doing this. And, and when we're an adult and when we're in a like work situation or relationship, do as I say, don't do as I do doesn't fly. It may when you're a parent, but it doesn't as an adult. You're just setting a bad example. You may be noticing that with someone else in your life too. So this is saying, I'm going to set the right example. So I see a lot of positive momentum when it comes to uh, bringing projects forward, ideas forward. And I see a lot of really good results of setting a good example. So be the best that you can be. Get out there in public. Um, you have a good chance also if you're trying to affect change to affect change. All the night cards can move things forward in a, in a really positive trajectory. So movement, change, for the better. Um, that's what I'm seeing for sun sign. And it's starting up here. So your, your way of looking or thinking about something is developing in a really positive way. And as this solidifies, you see things taking um, traction and, and making a positive sort of movement in your life. All right, moving from sun to rising. For the rising, we have the Princess of Pentacles, so page again. Um, it's reversed. You're deciding in this moment, I need something, I want to reallocate something, or I need to reset an expectation. Uh, I take a, when I'm looking at you, I see this as a positive sort of energy when it's reversed because it's saying, I'm not afraid to do something that I need or want to do right now because I've worked hard enough for that moment in time. It can also be an understanding of limits and saying, because we're looking at your environment card here, which was four of pentacles, which is not enough. And so this is saying, I'd like to help you too, but I need something in return. So this is stating and asking and saying whatever it is that you need to be happy, to be successful, to be inspired, to feel like you're growing. So you're ask and guess what? You'll probably get an upgrade on it because your outcome card is the king, um, not just the page. So you have to start somewhere negotiate a little bit, and it looks pretty good in the long run. So this this portends good things when I'm looking at career and environment, um, but it does require what we see on the ISIS card, which is articulation or uh, detailing or somehow communicating what it is that you need. That's hard. It's always easier just to sort of like hope that things will come to you. But this card is saying that there needs to be a document, a communication or an action that will help bring it to you. So you can be afraid if you want to, but push through the fear and feel empowered to say it um, because you'll get more than you thought if you do that. Okay. Let's move on from your rising to your moon sign. So don't second guess yourself. And this is also saying you're nobody's fool. And um, the high priestess is perceptive and she's very perceptive of people that are trying to pull her strings and that uh, when she's reversed that can be happening it can be it's a warning for you not to try to um, fool someone else and also you're nobody's fool either so the main message here is do the right thing and know that doing the right thing is going to pay out know that trying to get away with something won't we saw in no uh, uncertain uncertain way this month that it will see the light of day because we have this the star shining here and we have the the devil card coming through reverse which is revealed uh, we had a few of the uh, cousin cards coming through with the seven and the five of swords we also have the moon here so trust that whatever needs to come through will come through be the sort of advocate for positive change and be the example of good things we're getting a little bit of the sun message here for moon as well because everything will see the light of day. Everything will be revealed. Um, you have the ability to manifest, uh, especially, so this is really connecting closely to Isis. Interestingly enough, let's see here. Did we get, we got swords, but we got the, uh, the tricky cards here. So I would have loved to have seen like an ace or a king or a queen of swords come through. I would say for those of you that are in the Virgo moon, this is really encouraging you to speak with authority, with confidence, and with clarity. Because this month, Isis and the High Priestess energy is coming through the throat chakra. So ideas are great, but they have to make it into the physical world around you. So your, your words and your actions are going to help do that. So 
you're only one step away or one call away from making something really cool happen. So get it out from here, through here, or take some action and start to see some positive results on that, okay? Trust yourself, don't second guess, and don't try to get away with anything. And also put it out there that this month you're gonna see if someone else is trying to get away with something because I just see a lot of revelation, a lot of spotlight energy with that star card. So um, enough said on that. Let's take a quick checkpoint, make sure that we've worked through everything we did. It looks like we went through channel messages, Celtic cross, big idea, blessings and blocks, um, the voting portion, sun rising and moon. So we have uh, one more special piece left of this reading, which is going to be at the very end, a chance for you to ask me a question um, right after the meditation. I'll pull a card on whatever question that you might have, and we'll, we'll take a look and see what the energy is. Before we do that, just a periodic quick reminder to please like the video, please subscribe. And there are share options below, uh, and, or there should be when it's on replay. So share it. All of this engagement will help uh, this, uh, this channel grow a little bit. And let me know if there's different things that you want to see, especially on the, the short video that I did, if you want more of that. But I always read the comments. So if you want to see different types of readings, let me know. Follow me on social media for reminders and also just for different types of content. I occasionally post something unique on uh, Instagram or TikTok, so it's a great way to kind of make sure that you're, and Facebook as well. Um, remember, of course, that I don't do private readings and I don't send messages, so I always like to put that out there as a safety reminder. And if you want to give back, you can. It's optional, but it helps. So thank you in advance, and I will say thank you at the end of this video. All right, let's get ready for the meditation. As I look at all of the cards today, uh, one of the things I really want to focus on is this empowerment energy in the throat chakra. So we might even kind of meditate with the Ankh symbol, which is that cross with the loop. And we'll focus on opening up the throat and also releasing any sort of energetic ties that might be in your life. So let's meditate together and get ready for uh, the final card at the end. Okay, so take a few deep breaths. Please stick around if you can. This will only take about two and a half minutes, um, one for each of the portions here. So imagine that you are uh, looking outside and it is it is actually twilight. So it's you can see the stars beyond you, but, uh, but there's this, um, this beautiful sort of, there's two flowers in front of you and you're looking at a spider's web. And you're watching how through the starlight you can kind of see the twinkling of these threads. Um, there's some dew on it, so it shows up very clearly. And as the spider moves across, sort of waves its, its legs at you a little bit. And it reminds you of your power to create. And that you're nobody's fool. You don't have to get in anybody's web. Uh, that you have the ability to weave your own threads of fate. And it points to your throat chakra. And... In the spider web, you see the symbol for the Ankh, which again is the cross here with the eye in between it as well, but the cross with the loop at the top. So as you stand in front of this spider's web, which is big enough so that the Ankh can cover your heart or cover your throat rather, um, just allow the, the moonlight to shine through and cast a shadow of this symbol of power over your throat. And uh, you can close your eyes. The spider's not going to bother you. It's in, it's in its web and you're far enough away. It's just basically so you can get the symbol from the web. So as you're closing your eyes and you're connecting with this, imagine now that that ankh is lighting up in your throat chakra. And I want you to infuse some positive thoughts, not only in the throat itself, but also as you, you can say them out loud if you're at home, you can write them down if you're working. Um, but say some things that you can get behind and that you want the world to see as well. Starting, hopefully, with something of self-love. I love, accept, and celebrate what I have to bring to the world. I am worth all of the opportunities that I'm trying to create or manifest in my life. <laughs> and we can hear the movers upstairs doing their work. They're getting behind that as well. Maybe even like listening to that, I'm ready to move or to shift myself forward, myself past a block that I felt before. And having said anything else that you want to say, I'm going to kind of move into the background here and play the singing bowl, hopefully drowning out the movers above me. Um, I want you to just feel like 
your messages are being heard and that you have the power. Even if we kind of take that line from like He-Man, that was a really powerful thing where he's like, I have power or I have the power. You're going to say I have the power to do what I want to do. I've always felt the energy, the potential. I'm embracing this moment in time. Okay. Connect with your power. I'm going to get the singing bowl here. And then right after that, we'll take a look at the final card and the final message for today. resonating with the sound of the singing bowl, but also the truths that you were speaking, the positive energy that you were putting into your own auric field. And know that that's part of the cool thing that we can do with protection. We can actually put sound frequencies, thoughts, words, and colors in our protective field around us. And putting a bunch of those I am's, I am capable, I am willing, I am ready, is a great sort of practice. So Put some thoughts, put some energy out there, allow that to resonate and to become connected to and a part of your purpose. Take a moment now and reflect upon any final question that you might have for me. Let me put my singing bowl down and I'll take a look at that final card for you. Okay. So focus on your question uh, and just keep it to yourself for a second. And then we can talk a little bit afterwards about how it resonated. And let's see what's going on. All right. We have a beautiful card for your final question here. Uh, it's the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, very similar to the Ten of Cups. Lots of love, lots of support coming through for you today, Virgo. But with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse... Uh, there can be peer pressure. There can be a lot of expectations. It feels like it's, it's weighing a little heavier than it normally would on you. My reminder here is that, um, again, unconditional love or unconditional support is within reach. You are worth whatever it is that you're trying to create. This is a yes. It's a yes with a caveat. The can I do this? Should I do this? Is this possible? Question would be a yes. The caveat piece would be, but not at the expense of, you know, making other people happy, but you being unhappy, not at the expense of giving away too much and remembering that a big piece of what we talked about today was having some sort of control or autonomy when it comes to your, your sort of offerings to the world. So making sure that you're still a part of this and understanding that people love you because you're you. And they'll come around if they need to. So whatever it is that you need to do, uh, it'll be okay. A lot of family, a lot of um, friends energy coming through. So for some of you, this is a, 
a call or a reminder to reconnect because maybe some of you are just missing that. So having your boundaries between friends and family if they're encroaching or reconnecting if you're missing and remembering that when it comes to main decisions and big paths that you're taking in your life, particularly when we have like the star in the world, you have to do something because it's right for you. Uh, I'm in an interesting juncture in my life where, like I've said before, I don't have living parents and not a lot of living relatives left. So I'm happy that I made certain changes, you know, maybe like seven or eight years ago to to be able to be doing what I'm doing now, because had I sort of stayed on a path that was expected, um, a lot of those folks are gone and you, you have to sort of like live life for yourself because at some point it will be you, um, you and your partner maybe, but it's sort of like you have to, and at the end of this life, it's you judging your own sort of path. So you have to be happy with yourself. And as long as you are, everything else will come into focus. And you're, you've got such great power cards this month, particularly with the King of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles, that I see uh, rewards coming through. And for many of you, just you put pressure on yourself. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. And I think that you'll be okay. All right. These are the messages for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, I would love for you, like I said, to subscribe if you're new, to join me on social media if you feel so inclined. And if you want to show a little bit of love and support right now, you can do that. In fact, I'm going to take a couple moments here before we close just to say thank you. I'd like to begin by the long sort of standing members that have been here since I began uh, my channel around almost eight years ago now. Um, Thank you so much for being here every step of the way back before I even used to do monthly readings and just did sort of like specialized readings from time to time. It's, it's good to have seen you all of these years. Uh, for those of you that are Patreon supporters or members, thank you for that as well. As I look at the monitor, I see a bunch of familiar faces, so thank you for that. I want to call out some of the newest members and uh, today's supporters for Super Sicker or Super Chat as well. So um, let's go to that. Uh, welcome to Kara Ogden, a brand new channel member. Good to have you on board. Uh, let's see. It looks like Jose or Jose Let, maybe. I don't know. Or Josie Let. Thank you very much. Welcome, brand new member. Amber Pierce, rejoining after eight months. Uh, Natasha Doctor, uh, let's see, brand new member as well. I think everybody else I have welcomed um, because, it, well, actually, it's been a couple of days. So Sage Quills, Andrea Pom- Popescu, I think it is, Tanya Yor- Yorge, um, Adrian Porter. I think these are all the ones from this week. So welcome to everyone that joined during the week. Welcome to everyone that joined today. Good to have you on board. Uh, when I do my Q&A, hopefully in a month or two, depending on how quickly we can get the subscribers up, then I will uh, put out a special post just for members so that they get priority first, and then I'll open it up after that. All right, so super stickers and super chat today. Let's see what's coming through. Okay. So kicking things off, I want to say thank you to Lexi for being the first one to contribute today. I appreciate that. Uh, Mahima Lalit, thank you as well. Lori Carpenter, um, much appreciation to you. David Valencia, Missy Gordon, Martin Den, Mia Rees, uh, and then Damla. I can't pronounce the latter portion, but thank you to all of you for your support, your love, and for showing up today and working on yourself. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I did post reminders for the upcoming videos. Let me take a quick look so I can remember with you uh, what's coming through. So we have Libra tomorrow. We have a weekly collective on on Sunday, rather, and then Scorpio on Monday. I'll continue to make sure that I put two or three ahead so you can set the reminders since I haven't been able to put my um, my schedule up. Uh, but thanks again for everybody who's been supportive as it's been unpredictable over the past month or so with different, con- we could hear the construction a few moments ago. And uh, later today, I had to move it up because they're supposed to fix um, some of the pipes in the apartment. It's been nonstop construction since April. Uh, I know you can't hear it right now, but it's because, again, it's going to be starting in about 15 to 20 minutes. So thank you for patience and support as I've been going through this. All right, everyone, have a great day, um, a great month ahead, and a reminder that next month I should be back at normal time. So that'll be uh, probably the first video of August will be around the third because I have to move, but I'll post more at the end of this month so you know when to expect the next batch. And I should bring it back to the normal time, which will be nice uh, for Apollo and for I, so I don't have to get up so early. All right, until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.